think this myth exists because a lot of people assume that a vegan diet is very restrictive. There's also evidence to suggest that milk may not be as great for our bones as we originally thought. There are lots of things that animals do that wouldn't be appropriate for humans to do. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Charlotte. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe down below. I usually post anti-MLM content, which is anti-multi-level marketing, but during the month of January, I'm going to be sharing a few videos on various vegan topics for Veganuary. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell as well if you would like to be notified whenever I upload or I go live. In today's video, I'm going to be addressing some of the most common questions that people have with veganism. Before I get into the video though, I would like to tell you about a wonderful course from the Life Skills Company. During January and February, the Life Skills Company will be hosting a few online workshops focused on improving your learning and revision technique. Attendees will explore three different principles of effective learning and practice six different techniques for efficient learning and revision. This course would be perfect from anyone in years 7 to 11 or ages 11 to 16 if you're not from the UK. On this course you will learn how to revise effectively and enjoyably, learn when it is best to revise and how to take the stress out of revision so that you feel motivated and empowered in your studying. The workshop is one hour and is great value at only £25. If you want to book a place and places are limited, please go to www.thelifeskillscompany.com forward slash how hyphen to hyphen revise. After booking, you will receive a password to use to join the Zoom call on the day and a booklet that you can print out at home. The dates of the workshops are the 20th of January, 10th of February and 15th of February, all at 7 p.m. UK time. Okay, so let's get into the questions and the myths. One of the most common questions, and if you ever go vegan, you will definitely be asked this, is where do you get your protein from? For some reason, many people seem to think that the only place you can get protein is meat and eggs, but don't worry, this is totally not true. Protein is a very important nutrient since pretty much our whole bodies are made up of proteins. There are 20 amino acids that humans need in order to be healthy, and nine of those are called essential amino acids. What this means is that our bodies can't create them themselves, so we have to get them from our food. All nine of the essential amino acids that humans need, you can get on a vegan diet. Good plant-based sources of protein include beans, lentils, chickpeas, quinoa, tofu, soy products, including soya milk, oats, broccoli, spinach, and kale. Even foods that don't immediately come to mind as being very protein heavy do contain protein, such as bread, rice and pasta. So this is why if you're eating enough calories, you are almost certainly getting enough protein. Consider that many of the animals that meat eaters eat, such as cows and pigs, they get their protein from plant-based sources. So when you're eating a vegan diet, you're simply cutting out the middleman and getting your protein from where your old protein gets its protein. The next question is, doesn't a vegan diet make you weak and tired all the time? I've heard people say that a poorly planned vegan diet can make you malnourished, resulting in you feeling tired all the time. Now, correction, a poorly planned diet will make you malnourished and result in you feeling tired all the time. Any diet that is lacking in certain nutrients is gonna result in you not feeling great. Since a vegan diet relies much more heavily on fruits, vegetables, and legumes, as a vegan, you're probably actually getting a lot more of your nutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, and very importantly, fiber. I think this myth exists because a lot of people assume that a vegan diet is very restrictive, which leads me on to the next myth. Isn't a vegan diet pretty restrictive? Now, I can understand why people think that before looking into veganism, since a lot of the meals that we're used to preparing often contain dairy or eggs. But what I find helpful as a vegan is rather than thinking of the things that you have to cut out, it's more useful to think of all the things that you get to include in your diet. Many foods that you probably already eat 
are vegan, you just might not be aware of it. For example, lots of people enjoy pasta with vegetables and tomato sauce, or how about vegetable curries with rice? And a lot of things like cereals, bread, even chips, they're already vegan. So a lot of the food that you already enjoy, you will be able to continue enjoying if you decide to be vegan. And for the foods that do usually contain animal products, nowadays, especially in the UK, it's so easy to find plant-based alternatives. There are so many plant-based milks now, you can get plant-based yogurts and dairy products. Even dark chocolate usually is vegan, but if dark chocolate isn't your thing, there are so many wonderful vegan chocolate brands. There are fantastic meat alternatives. Some of my favorite brands include This Isn't Chicken and Linda McCartney. And even vegan cheese has come on so much in the recent years. There are some really good brands of vegan cheese now. I'm gonna be making a dedicated video on some of my favorite easy vegan recipes and favorite vegan alternatives. So do keep an eye out for that if you would like some more inspiration. I've also already made a video on whether you can be vegan and anti-diet culture at the same time. So if you are concerned that veganism might be a bit restrictive, I would encourage you to go over and watch that video after watching this one. Isn't it really expensive to be vegan? It can be, but it doesn't have to be. In the same way that any poorly planned diet is gonna result in you feeling tired and weak all the time, any poorly planned food shop is gonna be expensive. Some of the cheapest foods that you can find are vegetables, pulses, oats, grains, pasta, all of these foods are already vegan. If you then want to add vegan alternatives such as plant-based milks, faux meats and cheeses or vegan desserts, you can absolutely do that. But if you focus on the majority of your diet being primarily whole foods based with minimal processed foods, that's gonna be the best way of keeping the cost down. And it's also gonna be the best way of making sure you get all of your nutrients. But plants are alive, isn't it cruel to eat plants? Plants don't have brains, nerves or pain receptors, so they can't feel pain in the same way that animals can. Whilst plants certainly are complex organisms that can even respond to various stimuli such as light, gravity and temperature, the scientific consensus is that plants are not conscious. However, for argument's sake, let's say plants do feel pain. It would actually still take fewer plants to feed humans than it is currently taking to feed the livestock to feed to the humans. So if we care about reducing the number of plants we're using, we should still be following a vegan diet. The next question is, don't you need to drink milk to get calcium and to have strong bones? There are many plant-based sources of calcium, including broccoli and cabbage, fortified plant milks, tahini and sesame seeds, which is great news for any hummus lovers out there, pulses or dried fruits such as raisins, figs or prunes. In the UK, even bread is a good source of calcium since calcium is added to both brown and white flour by law. There's also evidence to suggest that milk may not be as great for our bones as we originally thought. According to a blog post shared by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, for decades, milk marketers have been spreading misinformation regarding the supposed health benefits of dairy products. However, the science simply doesn't back it up. I'm going to be linking the article down in the description and go check it out if you're interested because they do list a variety of myths surrounding milk. One particular myth that I want to read to you is about milk making strong bones. The dairy and bone health link is one of the most pervasive milk myths. One large-scale Harvard study followed 72,000 women for two decades and found no evidence that drinking milk can prevent bone fractures or osteoporosis. Another study of more than 96,000 people found that the more milk men consumed as teenagers, the more bone fractures they experienced as adults. Similarly, another study found that adolescent girls who consumed the most calcium, mostly in the form of dairy products, were at greater risk for stress fractures than those consuming less calcium. 
A very common question is why don't vegans eat honey? I got a lot of my information on the commercial honey industry from a video shared by Earthling Ed. He is a vegan educator. I will be linking that video down in the description. So I would encourage you to go check it out afterwards. Vegans don't consume honey because in the commercial honey industry, there are several unethical practices that are very common. Firstly, queen bees often have their wings clipped so that they can be identified amongst the colony and also to prevent something called swarming occurring. Swarming is when one colony splits into two or more new distinct colonies, which obviously decreases the honey production from the original hive. Another common practice is instrumental insemination, where about eight to 12 drone bees, which are male honeybees, are crushed to death so that their semen can be extracted. The queen bee is then restrained and has the semen injected into her, and this is how honeybees are bred. Additionally, during the winter months, after the honey has been extracted, it's not uncommon for colonies to be culled, since it's cheaper to just buy a new colony the next year than to keep them alive during the winter months. Hives will also often be culled if the bees are too aggressive. However, if the bees are not culled for the winter, they will be given a sugar syrup as a replacement for their honey, and this syrup lacks many of the nutrients that the bee needs from the honey. This is why many vegans think it's cruel to take the honey from them, because they work so hard to produce this honey, and it takes around 12 worker bees an entire lifetime to produce one teaspoon of honey. The commercial honey industry is also harming wild bee populations, since the honeybees compete with the wild bees for resources. Since honeybees collect the pollen and bring it back to the hive, they're not great pollinators compared to wild bees, since they don't transfer very much of the pollen to other flowers. And since the honeybee populations are increasing due to the commercial honey industry, they're pushing wild bees out of their habitats. And this also affects the ecosystems that these wild bees would normally be living in because they are the better pollinators, but there aren't as many of them around. On a similar note, people often ask, why don't vegans consume eggs from backyard hens? A lot of the information I got for this question also came from a video from Earthling Ed. Again, I will link it down below. Go check it out after this video. Firstly, we need to consider where the hen is coming from, because if you are buying a hen from a farmer or from a breeder, this is still going to contribute to the problems associated with commercial chicken farming. But if you rescue a hen, surely it's okay to take their eggs, isn't it? Hens have been selectively bred over the years to produce around 300 eggs a year. However, in the wild, if they weren't selectively bred, they would naturally be producing around 12 eggs a year. For clarity, that's 12 25 times the number of eggs they should naturally be laying. This excess egg laying depletes their bodies of vital nutrients and minerals, most notably calcium, which is used to produce the shell of the egg. For this reason, osteoporosis and broken bones are very common amongst hens. However, if we don't take their eggs away from them, hens will often be found to eat their own eggs, which will replace the calcium and the nutrients they have lost. Additionally, vegans avoid eating eggs from backyard hens because the point of veganism is sort of to reframe our perception of animals. Currently, our society views many animals as commodities rather than intelligent living beings with emotions and a desire to live and avoid pain. And vegans want to change this perception of animals. On a similar note again, often people say, well, what if I get my meat from an ethical farm? Firstly, it would be impossible for all the meat eaters we currently have to be getting their meat from ethical farms rather than from factory farms. There wouldn't be anywhere near enough supply to satisfy the demand. However, even if you are able to get your meat from a more ethical farm, it's still important to remember that they will all be slaughtered at the end of their life. And maybe you're thinking, well, if they've had a happy life up until that point, then surely that's all right. 
in which case I would ask you to consider putting yourself in their position. Since we know that animals possess consciousness and a desire to live without harm, I think it's only fair that we consider how we would feel if we were in their position. Would you be happy to go to a slaughterhouse at the end of your life if you'd had a happy and fulfilling life up to that point? My guess is that probably no, you wouldn't be happy. You wouldn't think that that would justify you being slaughtered at the end of your life. Remember that animals from ethical farms don't willingly walk onto the floor of a slaughterhouse. They are still forced there against their will and it is still a terrifying end to their life no matter where they have come from. Doesn't soy increase your risk of developing breast cancer? The short answer is no, this is a myth. According to the American Cancer Society, this myth has circulated due to the fact that studies carried out on animals do not always show the same result as studies carried out on humans. Soy contains compounds called isoflavones, and in some studies, rodents that have been exposed to high doses of isoflavones have shown to have an increased risk of breast cancer. This is thought to be because isoflavones work similarly to estrogen and increased estrogen has been linked to certain types of breast cancer. However, this is not the same for humans. In human studies, soy appears to either have no effect or to actually reduce your risk of breast cancer, especially amongst Asian people who typically eat more soy products throughout their life. Don't you need to eat fish to get omega-3? Well, actually, there are several great plant-based sources of omega-3 as well. Good plant-based sources of omega-3 include chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, walnuts, edamame, and kidney beans. I personally like to add chia seeds or flax seeds to porridge. This also adds fiber, which will keep you satisfied for longer. And if you're worried about your omega intake, you can always take a plant-based omega supplement. Finally, if other animals eat animals, why can't we? There are lots of things that animals do that wouldn't be appropriate for humans to do, such as defecating or mating in public. Many wild animals will also rape and murder, but this is not moral justification for humans to rape and murder. As humans, we have the ability to rationalize and consider morals, so we should use this in our decision making. Other animals need to eat meat to survive and to be healthy, but we know that humans can be very healthy on a plant-based diet, so at this point it becomes more of a question of morality. Do you think that a lion that is an obligate carnivore gets squeamish about the thought of catching and killing its own food? or do they get sick when their meat is undercooked or are particular about cutting off the fat on their meat? No, they're not. All of these are signs that it's not really that natural for us to eat meat. If you wouldn't kill an animal for meat yourself, is it morally justifiable to pay someone else to do it on your behalf? This isn't me judging anyone who currently eats meat or other animal products, so please don't view it like that but this is just me encouraging you to ask yourself these questions. Anyway, that is where I'm gonna be leaving it for today. I hope you found this informative and interesting. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up on this video. Generally, my vegan videos don't do as well as my anti-MLM videos, so leaving a comment and a thumbs up would really help me out in the algorithm. I hope you're all having a wonderful new year, and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Yeah.